Uh, I'm going to get started in about a minute. Everyone can hear me, correct? Perfect. Uh, I'm not sure about this question about data consults. But you can all hear me and it is now noon, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, hi, welcome, I'm Nikki O'Neill. I'm a digital technologies development librarian at NC State University Libraries. Um, I'm going to be doing a part two of um, a Twitch stream I did before, which was just me live coding, um, which basically means I had, uh, hi Claire, um, I, I didn't really have like, a lot of times with workshop you see people like actually did the thing beforehand, this was just me going from um, my brain straight on to the screen, um, which I think is a good experience because a lot of times when people code, um, you're not quite sure like what goes into that and you think, oh, especially with like television, people are just like typing all crazy and then something works. That's not how coding works at all. Um, I chose a somewhat simple problem because no one wants to spend 20 minutes watching me like mess with one line of code. Um, but even with a simple problem, I'm still going to run into issues and errors. Um, so uh, the problem that we originally started with was um, using APIs and we created a Jeopardy. Um, I'm going to zoom this out a little. Is, oops. If I zoom out to that, can everyone still see what I'm typing? Or is that too far zoomed out? Yeah. I'm going to assume people can read that, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, I'm not seeing anything in the chat about people having trouble reading at that zoom depth. Um, so. This is the code, this is how far we got last time. And I'm gonna run the application. Now, um, oops, that's not good. Um, okay, so I already ran into a problem. Can't find package file. Okay, oh, I am in the wrong folder. So the way you can tell that often is ls, so you can see there's a folder called Jeopardy, which is where I want to go into. And I'm going to type in npm run serve, which will get me my server up and running. Um, let's see, let's take you a minute. Um, so we're using Vue.js to build this application. Um, if you remember from last time, we also set up this application with a um, URL using GitHub pages. So this is what the application looks like now. Um, and I'm going to just go ahead and go to my local version so we can mess with it and see the differences. Um, but what happens is we get, let's see, and it's been a while, so I have to go back and see what, um, like go through the code and see what we're doing. Um, this is where commenting comes in really handy. I gotta remember how to comment in Vue.js, so yeah, it's two backslashes. Um, so this is the method for checking uh, a typed in answer. And I'm just going through that see what's going on there. This created function is um, core to Vue.js. So um, 
this is what happens like when the application split spins up. So we get a random number and I'm going to open the console so you can see um, this console log statement is just gets spit out into the console so you can see kind of what's going on. And then we're getting uh, the API, which is a variable we set somewhere, I think, in the app file. Let's see. Yep. So this is the API we're using. I'm going to want that open in the browser as well. Um, so I can just go through the API documentation. It's always useful to have that. Um, let's see, I'll go back. So I'm getting the data from there. The clues are the clues in this API response. The category is the title from that API. And that looks like all the code there is. So we obviously didn't get very far. Um, so now I think Let's see. I feel like I need to look up the rules of Jeopardy. It's been a while. Um, so this is the value. So now maybe we want it to look like an actual column in Jeopardy. Um, so how are we going to do that? So that is where CSS is going to come into play. Um, so I'm going to have to go look things up. So um, CSS, how to create a column. Now I use CSS very often in my daily life. Um, I never remember how to do anything with CSS. It's always something. Look, I have something where I went and looked at a three column layout for another one of my projects. Like this is not new. Okay, so you create a row and a column. You try it yourself. That's always helpful and it gives you everything. So, how to do this. Okay. Hmm. And feel free to type any questions you have into the chat while I do this. Um, this is just me freeform. This is like what my process looks like whenever I'm coding something new. It's like a weird amount of me just staring at things sometimes, which I understand is not particularly engaging. So I'm going to tab that in so I actually have some nice, like you don't need to do the tabs, but honestly it just makes everything a lot more readable. Otherwise you're going to be like, what matches up with what? Okay. So you know what? I don't need this row. This is just going to be Actually, this comes in later, but we'll keep the row because eventually what we're going to want to do is build a full Jeopardy board. Um, so the row we're just putting in there for now where it's not going to do anything, but it will do something later, I think, where it could be useless and I end up deleting it later. That is the joy of coding. Okay, so I put in those values into my browser, and as you can see, it didn't do anything. And it won't unless I put some of this CSS in. So oftentimes I'll just copy this whole thing and then edit so you can see what's going on. Okay, so if we go in, as you can see, it created like a row type thing but there's nothing there. So what we're gonna wanna do is change this width because what it's doing is uh, taking the width and basically um, making it 30% because it's expecting three columns. And right now we only have one. Um, this still does not look like a Jeopardy column. So I'm gonna just delete all this because that's not what I want. So I think the thing I need to do is I spelled column wrong. Is go look at a Jeopardy board because I forgot what they look like. Okay. 
this is helpful. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do is make each clue have its own, like, I'm going to want to put a class. And I'm going to make this class um, box CSS. And the box, I think that's also going to be a box, is going to have specific CSS. So we're going to change it to uh, border. And you can look this up. Actually, I have to look this up because border has multiple. It, I think it's a color, a width, and a color width and something. I always have to look it up. Um, yeah, okay. It's width and then like if it's solid, dotted, or whatever. And then the color. So I want to do 5px, sounds good. And then we're going to do black. And see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking better. Um, and then, let's see, we're going to do a background of blue, and we'll do font color, hmm, I think it's just color. There we go. We got something that looks a little bit like what we're going for. Um, and then it also looks like we have like some weird things going on where we have like multiple 200s. So we're going to want to edit our data. We're going to want to clean it. And I think we're also going to want to do something. Well, for one thing, let's have a dollar value. So it says $200. So we just added a dollar. Uh, in front of this variable. Um, but I think it would also be cool if like you click on it and then flip and then it will say if you got the answer right or wrong. So that's something we're going to continue doing. But let's first clean up the data. So we get the data in this creative function and we get the clues. So I'm going to go ahead and do response data clues so I can get an idea of what it looks like. Um, so yeah, this is a lot of clues. So as you can see for this variable, it gives us 110 results. Um, we probably don't want that. Um, so what are we going to do? Um, hmm. I think what we want to do is maybe do a sort. Um, I think if we just grab the first value that's 100, we're going to get the same question every time, which is going to be a problem. Um, so if we get this category, I'm going to close some of these tabs. Um, let's see. This is a good way to check. So if I go to the API and check, um, so I can actually go to the API and like reload this multiple times, which is doing the same thing as our request. So if I reload it, let's see if the first result is the same. It is, which is going to inform. So certain APIs, like the results in terms of like this clue list might be like in a different order every time you refresh it. But most APIs, they aren't. They're in like a set order. So what we want to do is, what do we want to do? Well, there are a couple of ways we can approach this. This is where looking at the data is really useful. Um, so as you can see, there's an error date with a lot of these. So maybe we just want to grab, like we could grab a random item in there and get everything with the same error date. Um, so as you can see, we're doing a random number here. What we could do is a random number and grab like any random number from these clue results, grab the air date, and then just filter out anything 
without that air date, but we first need to check. So let's see, do the air dates have like all the same? Do they have like all the numbers we need basically? So we just need to make sure the data is clear enough um, that we're not having a problem. And it looks like based on like the small amount of data that I'm looking at right here, um, it looks like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So it looks like this is on a problem. So now we need to create a random number generator, a second one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and we're gonna call this a different, we're gonna, we're gonna need to re, um, do they ever repeat questions on the show or do they only use it one time ever? I don't know. I think that's something that you'd find out like after you, like if it's a problem, it's something someone would probably report. Um, I'm sure they do repeat questions. I think that's been done before. Um, but I also think they're like in different categories. So I think it's less of a problem. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to need to rename this variable. So we don't want random number, otherwise it's going to overwrite this. And since we declared it as a constant, it's actually going to cause an error. So we're going to need to rename this variable to clue number. And we want it to be a random number. Let's see, I've been switching between languages lately, so I just need to make sure that that is the correct way of getting the length of a list, which I don't think it is. Oh. See, I'm getting an error because of something called a linter. Um, it's just a way of making, it's something that's built into Vue.js um, that makes sure you don't declare variables that you never use basically, because um, it's just bad coding to do it that way. So, let's see. Yes, that is the correct way of getting a length. So what I'm gonna wanna do is get a random number. Okay, I wanna get a random number between zero and this length, which means I need to go look up math random because I know there's a way of doing it within that um, variable, but I don't remember how. Um, let's see, getting a random number between two values. Here we go. Math random times max minus min plus min. I mean, that seems strange, but I'm going to go with it. Oh, get, no, get a random number between two values, get a random integer between two values. Oh, yeah, we're going to want to get a random integer. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get like a point something, um, which would not be good. Or, I mean, I guess I did a parse int, which actually just does the same thing. But this will round up or round down. So we need to get our max. Our min is going to be zero, I believe. Yeah, it's going to be zero because the way the clues are in something called an array or a list, depending on what language you're using. Um, and so an array or a list always starts at the value zero. So zero is a valid, um, item for us. And our max is going to be the length of the list. So let's, see. let's make sure this works. Oh, it looks like I already have an error. Unnecessary semicolon 57. Oh, I have two semicolons. Look at that. Okay, so let's see, 58. Let me just refresh this page because it looks like I'm getting the same thing. Okay, yeah, so it got two. Okay, so based on this one, I can already tell you I have a problem because the random number I got was two and this list is only one long, I think. Sometimes I'm gonna have to double check. Um, so 
that tells me I need to do the length minus one plus zero. Okay, and let me just double check the length of this list. Okay, so, um, so, okay. Uh, in the console, you can actually see it will tell you what line this statement's coming from. So 54 is my random number, which I don't need this anymore um, for testing. Um, okay, so this list has a length of 10. So as you can see, line 56, where I'm getting the clues length. So it has a length of 10, and my clue number is 2. So now what I'm going to do is um, something called get date, which is equal to a uh, response date data dot clues. You know what? Since I'm using this response data dot clues, I'm gonna name a variable clues so I don't have to type response dot data dot clues a bunch of time. So what I can do now is replace all of this. with just a shorter variable. Um, and I want to get the clues at this clue number. And if I do this, this is actually going to get me the whole variable, but I'm going to end up wanting, yeah. If I look at my console statement, I can see this is the entire variable and the the what I want is that uh, error date. And so, unless there's something the game, nope, there's something in game ID. We don't want the category ID. We don't want the ID. Okay, so yeah, what we want is the error date. So when I save this again, what we should get is this error date string. And then now what we're going to want to do is um, there is um, in JavaScript, there is a function called filter. I think it's filter. Yeah, filter, which is for arrays and allows you to basically filter out things based on a condition. So what you do is we're going to do clues. Um, we're going to name a constant, um, filtered clues equals clue, clues dot filter. Um, and then, um, we're going to name a variable for like, basically what filter does is it goes through every item in the list and checks to see if that item um, meets a condition. So we're going to have to like name a variable for, for each item basically. So I'm going to say clue is my variable. And then I'm not quite sure why you use the equal caret, but that's just how it's built. Um, and then I'm going to say, uh, when the clue air date equals get date colon and then let's look at filter clues and see if that actually gets us what we want that gets us a, an array that's five long so now I'm gonna replace this dot clues which is what we're going through here with um, filtered clues see what happens now we have five items, even though um, based on the statement, you can see 57, the clues length is actually 80. So now we have a list of only five, one through 100, uh, 500. Now this API is like not fully having to do with her. No, oh, you know what? I think this is just single jeopardy. I wonder if there's ever like double, oh, these, these are all double jeopardy, so interesting. That's something we're going to have to filter out later too or figure out how to do that. But I think that's a later problem. 
let's just get the board slightly more built. So I'm going to remove these console statements because I know what's going on. Okay, so now we're going to do like some fun CSS where it like flips and then you see it. Um, so let's see. Question. I'm going to need to create another div, which is just uh, uh, HTML item. We're going to say just. Okay. So you're starting with doubles. Um, I'm not quite sure what this good idea you're starting with doubles question is in reference to. Uh, can I get a little more context? Um, okay. So we're gonna say we don't want to display this. Play this. So that just gives us the dollar amount. Um, so now we're gonna want to figure out a way. Ah, no. Right now we're starting with any Jeopardy question. So as you can see, when I refreshed, it was a hundred. Um, this is a hundred. Um, no, right now it's just, we're not, we're not filtering out single versus double jeopardy. Um, we'll do that later. Um, and there's gotta be some way to do that. There are a couple things we need to do in terms of filtering, but I think that's going to come later. Um, as, as we do like more things. See, this one only has, this one doesn't have 300, a $300 clue. So, we're going to have to deal with the data a little later, but I'm going to do some more fun CSS things right now. Um, and then we'll go back to the not fun part of data wrangling. Yeah, okay. So, now we got to figure out how to, like, basically... Like if I click on this 100, it will flip it and give me a way of um, of like showing the clue. Um, so how do I do that? Um, let's see. Okay, so what I'm gonna want to do is create a V on which is just a it's a view option so the beyond is something having to do with view and then click is just click um, and we're gonna call a function that says uh, flip uh, let's see flip card and we're gonna do method called flip card and this is just a Vue.js way of um, building a function. Uh, different applications, like if you're in Python, it's uh, de it would be def flip card, and I spelled flip wrong. This has happened to me multiple times um, in life, and I've literally published code with flip spelled wrong or something like that. Um, this is Python. Ruby is... God, I can't remember Ruby. I'm going to have to look it up. Actually, I think this is Python. I'm not sure. I always have to look that one up. Um, but this is the way of uh, calling a function in um, um, view. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to just call this test. And what we should see is when I click on this, as you can see, there's a console statement that says test. So, what we want to do is make sure that um, we're displaying the right clue value. So, like, 
when we click on the 100, we want, don't want the 200 to also flip and show the clue. So I'm pretty sure this is the way of doing things. I will have to, if this does not work, I'm going to have to double check um, in the documentation. But I'm pretty sure this is how you do it. Um, yes. Okay. So, as you can see, it's click, and then there's a target, and it gives you some stuff, and it says header one. Um, so we need to come up with something that will basically tie this clue value to, um, that's what I'm looking for tie the clue value in the category to um, to to what you need to display. Um, so how are we going to do this? Oh, you know what? We don't need to do event. I forgot. We can do clue value. And that will tell us we need to flip. Let's see. If I change this variable. Um, what goes between these functions is the variable that you pass in. So you can, like if you don't want to pass in a variable, you can set a default. So let's say this is false. I don't want to do that, but that's, a, that's an option with most programming languages. Um, so as you can see, I'm getting the value of 200. If I click on 400, I'm going to get 400 in this console, which I'm hoping everyone can see. Um, as you can see, 600. This is getting nothing because there's no variable there. A thousand. So then, what I'm going to want to do is we're going to want to make an ID or something about display. I mean, there are a number of ways we can do this. One is you just mess with the CSS, but I think we're going to want to be able to keep track of like how much someone's lost or won eventually. Um, one of the things when writing code is thinking about the future and what way is going to make it easiest for you in the future. So I'm going to create another variable um, that is called um, clue tracker and let's see, I think I'm going to make it a dictionary. This might change. This is just a, this is for now as I mess with things, what kind of variable can often change. So we're going to say clue tracker and then we're going to say the clue value equals um, show. And then what we can do here is display it and clue tracker. And if clue tracker clue dot value equals shown see if that does so. And I got an error. So clue tracker is not defined. Okay. Why is it not defined? That's odd. Oh, you know what? It isn't defined. Okay, so we can do that. So if clue tracker actually has a, nope, it's still not defined. Okay, so there is a problem. There's like a typo or something somewhere. Let's see. Bye. Hmm. Well, something's going wrong. Oh, 
my problem is here. So in the script, so the way Vue works is there's a template portion, which is this, um, which does all the HTML stuff. There's a script portion, which is this, that does all the JavaScript portion, and a style portion, which does all the CSS. Um, in the script portion, you have to define anything in this data function as this dot and then that data func uh, this data variable. Um, I think I can get rid of that. But within the template, you don't put this dot. It actually causes problems. And I'm not 100% sure why that is, but it is. Um, so that's just kind of how it is. Um, So the problem is I didn't have this dot and it was causing a problem. So if I click on this now, oh, it's not doing anything. Okay, so something is wrong. Um, so let's check. Yes, it is always a punctuation. So let's check and see if this food tracker value. See if that does anything. For some reason my control V is not working. Okay. Let's just do this. So there's a problem somewhere. So 100 is showing up as shown. So now I'm going to go into my template and see if maybe there's a problem with it keeping up to date. Okay, so as you can see, this variable is not updating. Um, it should update to show this 100 shown. So we gotta figure out why that's not working. And I'm guessing it might have something to do with the key. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna move this out. Um, you know what? Sometimes this does a weird thing. I don't know why in Vue.js, but I think let's try this. Sometimes, like, you can't just say equals. Sometimes with, like, these really nested formats, you have to do this set. And that's what, that's, that was the solution. Okay, so. Um, there are a couple things we probably want to do. I can get rid of this line. Um, so we're going to probably want, right now, if you click on any, you can basically see all the results. Um, that is not, I don't think you can do that in Jeopardy. Um, so we're probably going to want to disable. How do you, um, that's just from experience. So part of the reason I'm like doing this part so fast is I've worked with Vue.js on, wow, um, how many projects? A good number of projects. I want to say at least two big ones and a number of small ones. Um, so especially if you're so if you're familiar with Suma, which is the library's um, space collecting application, um, it has a like a very complicated data structure, and we ended up rewriting the front end using Vue.js. Um, I think that's one of the applications where I learned that set. Um, like, like you need to use dollar set. Um, and the way I found that out was just Googling and it was like basically something along the lines of Vue.js. Um, my data is not updating. 
um, or something along those lines. And then I went into like a Google rabbit hole and figured out um, based on that uh, what problems I was running into. Um, so there are a couple things we want to do. Um, so normally like it will flip. So let's also do, we want to only show this value. Um, we only want to show the dollar value if it's not equal to shown. So if the clue tracker has that clue value and it's not equal to shown, so basically when you click on it, you remove the dollar amount. Um, and then we can also, let's see. So now we want to basically allow someone to answer the question and then like after they answer it, either we're going to tell them there right now you can put as many like you can guess as many times as you want it's not really how um jeopardy works so we're going to only allow them to guess once so what we want to do is change our check change our check answer um basically and we're also going to want to um do like a dollar tracking. So we're going to start with zero as everyone does in Jeopardy. Um, and so basically if it's correct instead of doing this set message correct we're going to say I mean we can keep that message but we're going to also want to update the dollar tracking um, to plus equals um, let's see, this clues, and I think it's value. Um, we're just going to want to put a console statement to double check that. Right. And I'm also, this is just for testing purposes, we'll make it pretty later, but put that variable at the top so I can see it. Um, okay. We do $200. Horses are hot to do it. Oh, I got an error if I enter nothing. Ah, trot. I'm cheating, but that's okay. Okay, so value was not the correct variable. So I'm just going to put a console statement to look at this dot clues. Oh, I didn't put the correct index variable. Let me do clues index. Uh, Suma is not in view yet. We rewrote it and we haven't deployed that yet. But um, it's it, we rewrote Suma into view for um. Let's see, because there's like a the old version has something that's gone is going to go out of date, but we haven't actually gotten into the like. That thing hasn't, one of the dependencies for the old version of Suma um, is going to go, like, it's going to get stops being, okay, wow. Uh, it's, they're going to stop supporting it. Um, so we rewrote the whole thing in Vue, but we haven't actually, like, put it, at least our instance. There's an open code ba base version with view that like you can download if you want, but we haven't deployed it yet for um, the library's version of view. Uh, to descend to the bottom of anything, even a laboratory. I have no idea. Ah, sync. Okay, so now I have $200. So that looks like it's for a thing working. Okay. Um, a roll call. My brain is not working today. I feel like I should know that. Ah, bolt. I really should know that. Okay, so, and our money is adding up correctly. So 200 and 300 were correct. Okay, so now what we want to do is, like, when you're correct, you don't want to, like, show that. Um, 
this correct thing. We, we want to like go back to showing um, the dollar amount and then like maybe putting some CSS so it's like gray so you can see you've already done that one um, and making it not clickable. So we can do that. So first of all, we also want to, when they're incorrect, um, see, it's very annoying that my control B is not working, is we also want to delete, uh, subtract that value. So let's go ahead and, wow, I'm just gonna type it in. Uh, minus equals this dot clues index dot value. Um, and instead of doing set this clues index, do um, index. We're going to set the clue tracker. To. Let's see, clue tracker at, let's see, you don't want to do index, we want to do this dot clues dot index dot value to um, answer. And then we can do different. And we're going to do that again in the incorrect answer. And let's see. So I got the right answer, which is heartening. Um, but it looks like there was an error when I answered it. This dot clues dot index is undefined. Ah, you have to do dot index is not a value, so you have to do index in brackets. Okay, that hopefully should work. I have no idea. Somewhere in the Midwest, I'm guessing. Oops. Okay, so I got that wrong. So it went back to 100, but now I can still click on it and answer it. So we're going to want to disable that. Um, and we're going to also want to somehow, you know, signpost that they got it wrong besides just this 100. Um, if anyone has any ideas on how to signpost someone got it wrong, I'll take it. Maybe we just have like a big, you failed or something. I don't know. Um, that pops up. Because you can do something, it's called alert. There are prettier ways of doing this. But you can do something called alert. And you say wrong. Or correct. Though I find these annoying because it's like you have to say okay before you are allowed to do anything else. I don't know cartoons. Handy Panda. I've never heard of that. Sorry if that makes me old. Okay, so as you can see, I got an alert that says wrong. Yes, a buzzer noise would also. And not to mention that assumes that um, your users can hear a buzzer. Um, so oftentimes you want to make sure you're inclusive when you're, um, not oftentimes, all times. You want to make sure you're inclusive when coding an application. So anything auditory um, or visual, honestly, I don't think this is probably inclusive, which is why I have this. Um, what's it called, um, add-on that basically um, shows me any accessibility problems. Um, so as you can see, I haven't done too terribly. 
Um, I'm missing a language in my HTML. Um, there's also no page regions and a no script element, which are all problems with accessibility. And there's also a contrast, which uh, can tell me if, oh, and it gives me the structure. So as you can see, these are my headings. I should probably do my um, these at heading two because they are like a, the way you think about like accessibility is you want to make things structured so like people understand like, okay, like these are saying these are all in the same like hierarchy when really the hundreds, 200, 300, 400 go under Andy. Um, but there's also, should be, oh yeah, looks like I have zero contrast errors. So the yellow with blue is actually not a problem. Um, but yeah, um, there are a number of these out there that will do um, accessibility. Uh, the add on I'm using is called Wave. Um, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it's a Wave Chrome and Firefox extension. This is a web accessibility evaluation tool. I don't know what the V is for, but yeah, to each of them. It's a little confusing. Okay, so back to this. Okay, um, so I've gotten this working. Um, now what I'm gonna want to do is disable. Um, so there is a CSS, um, yeah, disabled properly property. Um, so I guess it's just disabled equals true. And you also might want to get this pointer events. Um, so there is a way in CSS, um, or not CSS, in... I'm going to go ahead and make this a little easier to read. Um, there's a way in Vue.js that you can set certain classes based on a variable. So we're going to say um, vbind class equals. Actually, I think I have to look this up. I use it so often, but I can't remember exactly. Ah, here we go. Vbind class and the class. The way this is set up is um, if variable is active, then the class is equal to active. Um, so if it has an error, then it's text danger. It also has that class. Um, and as you can see in this data, is active and has error or variables. Um, you can also do, there's another way where you can say, yeah, basically you set this like dictionary and this is not what I'm thinking of. Yeah, here we go. So basically is active is active, then you do an active class, otherwise you say there's no class. Um, so, I think that's what we're going to want to do. We're going to want to do like an if else variable. So um, we're going to want to say if actually since we set up this clue tracker a certain way I'm trying to think we could just set the class to whatever this clue tracker variable is if it's shown whatever um you might want to do it that way actually well yeah let's do it that way makes it easier i think so i'm going to set the class to whatever this clue tracker clue value is so if i go back to my jeopardy clues and go to here um, okay, so I can see hmm. Oh yeah, 
Okay, so this header does not have a class, but if I click on it, this should. These are this is green. That's correct. Okay, so yeah, if you look now, the class is answer. So when that variable is, um, really explain this. Uh, when that when that has a variable, um, because the header is not shown when the clue tracker variable equals shown, um, so the class only shows up when you've answered it. So I can go ahead since I do have that now have that class. Um, so my class is named answered. Um, what I'm gonna want to do is say pointer events none and then I think there's also a CSS way to say disabled. Nope, you just want to disable it. I think. Let's see. <sighs> Yeah, so, you, okay, so I kind of did this a little bit wrong. I mean, this also works because now you're not going to have a clicky thing. Um, so pointer events basically, I can show you. See how, like, my cursor went uh, from, can you see? I don't remember what this is called where you can highlight. Um, but see how this is like an arrow cursor? Um, what happens is when you do disabled, um, or pointer events none. What happens is that cursor does not show up as a cursor anymore. So let's see if I can show you this. Okay, so right now it's a cursor when I'm on this box. Um, now, I spelled bingo wrong. They wanted B dash I dash n g o that's annoying well what's supposed to happen is i'm not supposed to be able to see a cursor here anymore when i do that pointer events let's just make sure that yeah it has that answered class well it doesn't really matter because we're going to disable it so we're going to go back and we're going to say v bind disabled equals um, if clue tracker equals answered. So basically we're going to say, um, disabled equals true. Um, if this clue tracker value equals answered. It should have disabled it. Uh, this is Wright Brothers. I know this because of my license plate. Maybe I don't know that. Okay, the Wright brothers. So we're gonna have to do some data wrangling there too, because in my opinion, Wright brothers should have been correct, even without the the. Hi, Colin. Um, okay, so I shouldn't be able to click on this anymore. So my disabled is not working. So. This is often the way it is with CSS. Then I can get it wrong again because I'm slightly bitter about that. Um, okay, so now I need to look up um, how to disable button. Maybe that's it. Okay, well maybe the problem is it's not a button. I'm not actually using a button, I'm using a header with an on click. So maybe it's a view thing. So view.js disable on click. Okay, so this is disabling a button conditionally, disabling a button after click. 
They're all doing the same thing except for, let's see, they're not. V bind and just colon whatever is the same thing, but we'll see if that changes anything. I mean, it shouldn't, but maybe it does. You never know. This is why you try. Um, no, sorry. Someone's messaging me. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, it's still not disabled. Now I have $400. See, this is why you want to disable things, because otherwise you can just cheat and give yourself all the money. Um, not disabled. We'll disable it So that is working. Maybe if I change this to a button. Okay, so it works if, with a button. So what we had works if I change this to a button. So what we can do is actually wrap that button in a header too. Um, that gives us this weird like CSS things going on them. Um, man. I'm just getting all the answers right, but wrong. Um, okay, so the disabled work, but now we're getting some like weird CSS stuff going on because button has its own special CSS. So what we want to do is create another class. Let's see, is there already a class on this? No. Um, clue value, um, we'll call it clue value, and what we want to do is normally what I do is use, um, what are these called? You right click and you say inspect. I don't know what those are technically called, but I use it all the time. Um, and now I want to look at the styles. Um, this is a good way of like just testing out CSS without ever having to like, like if I wanted to see what this would look like with a different color, say green, I can just change it here without having to change it in my code and I'd still be able to see what it looks like. And I'd actually be able to run wave over it as well. Um, so it allows a certain amount of um, ability to see things. Um, and test CSS. Now what I'd like to do is see, normally there's, yes, there's something called computed. And let's move this over. Is it computed? That's where it was computed. Um, well, I thought computed would show me like all that weird button CSS. But that's fine. I'm pretty sure with buttons it's appearance. And I want to change the appearance to not button. Let's see. Um, this is not working. I'm guessing some other CSS is overriding it. So what I want to do is put um, what is that called? Exclamation point important, and this makes sure. It, maybe I spelled appearance wrong. Oh. That's weird. I don't think I've ever had that happen. Okay, we'll try it on the code base. Otherwise, there's something weird going on. Hmm. Huh. 
We want to do the value button. Yep, okay. So now it's getting, I mean, the button looks slightly different, but not really what you want to look, it to look like. Um, so. See, it's doing some thing. Okay, so now I'm just gonna have to go look something up. So, button CSS, remove style. And as you can see, I've done this before for, again, another project. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this. And see what that, there we go. It's back to what it looked like before, but without a button. Oh, Stack Overflow is very nice. Okay, so uh, this is Samson. I got it correct. Went back, and now if I try to click on 100, it is not going to work. So, there's something else we want to do. So, when something is disabled, you tend to want to be able to um, sort I'm looking for signposts that it's disabled. So, maybe right now we'll just do color gray. So yeah, otherwise, like, how are people supposed to know that you got it correct or whatever? Um, or like that you clicked on it? Because I don't know about you, but I have like a horrible memory. Um, so you want some kind of signposting so people have realized they've already clicked on this. Um, let's also do pointer events. Um, none. Ah, so as you can see, you get like this arrow, but when I go here, you get an actual point, like a little finger pointer. Um, so, this smaller. Okay. And then also, we might want to do something where like no answer. Um, because I don't know what the answer to this is. And my other option is to just guess um, and lose money. So maybe we want to have a, um, a way, either we want to do like a button where it's like, I don't know, skip. Or maybe we want to just have it be like when you enter nothing. Um, I am willing to take answers in the chat if someone has a preference. Um, but as you can see, now we have like your total score up there. Um, let's see, what else would we want to do? Oh, maybe we want to put some CSS in for flipping. CSS flip card. Oh, look, they have a... looks complicated. Let's see. Mm. This is a hover. So I have flip card without a hover. We want a flip card without a hover. So it's just too much. on click ah someone actually has this question on stack overflow okay hmm We're gonna come back to this, I think. This is one of those things where is it worth it? 
for the amount of work you're going to have to do. Um, often when creating any kind of web application, that is a question you have to ask yourself. Um, so, what to do next? Well, next we might want to actually um, have like multiple columns. So let's think about doing that. So how would we do that? Well, what we want to do is what we're doing now, except um, multiple of them. So what we could do, I'm trying to think. That's the best way of doing this. <sighs> hmm. So what we could do is just in this, what we're, what we're building right here, what this is is a component. So there are two ways of doing this. We could either just reuse this component, which I think might be the easiest way, or we change this component so that um, basically we're doing some kind of loop. But I think the best way of doing this would actually to use to create a new component. So we're going to create a new component. So we're going to call this one Jeopardy Board, which is much better than Hello World. Um, and what we're going to do is create a new component, which means you, uh, we need a template variable. And we need a script variable. Hmm, this is not right. It's more like this. Okay. And we're going to need a style variable. And let me just make sure there's nothing in the chat. Just make sure it's nothing. Okay, doesn't look like it. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is import this component. So, you know what? What I'm going to do is just go to some of my old code. Honestly, instead of looking it up, it's easier to just look at old code I've done and get it from there. Okay, so what you need to do is import, yeah, import the name of the variable, which is hello world, from, and then this is the path, so they're in the same path, so we're going to do hello world, view, and then what we want to do is, it is a component, so we're going to need to define it as a component. Component's name is Hello World. And I think that's all you have to do. Yeah. Okay. So now I can say call Hello World. And you know what, I think if I'm remembering correctly, yeah, I'm actually doing this here. So what I'm going to want to do, no, I've already done this. Well, but we're going to actually want to create a different one. So let's call this Jeff. 
Cardboard. And Jeopardy board. And Jeopardy. I'm just going to change everything. And do that. And we're going to actually change, let's see, API string. So how do we want to do this? Because right now, like the previous way we did it is fed the API string into the Jeopardy board. But I think what we want to do is do props, API, and we're going to make this a string. Um, and then we're going to remove this property from our hello world. And let's see, this.api, we only call it once. So the cool thing about, um, and I can show this to you, about uh, Vue.js and a lot of other um, programming languages is you can actually, at least the way you do it in Vue.js is called a parent and you can grab a variable from the parent. So as you can see, I am, and I can show you this in the console, basically you can get the parent variable, so which is the Jeopardy board and get everything from there. So we're just gonna pat that allows us to basically only pass in the API once. And what we can do now is basically do multiple hello worlds. So we can do, oh, right, okay. So I'm gonna create a root element, which is div. And as you can see, they're kind of stacked. So what I want to do is um, figure out a way to make it so they're not stacked. I want them to be side by side, which is where that columns we looked up originally is going to help out. Um, we also have to figure out, let me double check how many card categories there are for uh, the Jeopardy board. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we want it to be six. So what we're gonna do is actually create a for loop. Um, let's see. And this is actually gonna help, we'll be able to like basically say, okay, we wanna create a hello world component for double jeopardy and single jeopardy. And this will actually help with us um, being able to, to, to be able to like parse that data a lot easier. Um, but first we're gonna say, uh, let's see, let's say data, let's data. I always forget how to build a data structure at yeah, data function return. It's like not, this is the only time I've seen this in Vue.js with this data function return, um, or the function return. It's the only thing in Vue that you do things like this. And a uh, number of rows, I'm just gonna say six. Um, and then I'm gonna say rows, class rows. Um, the for, okay, and we're going to do a for loop over range in JS. So basically we're going to want to basically run this loop six times. So yeah, this is, uh, so it says for n in six. I may even have to define that number of rows, but I did. And then for n in six, we're going to want to do a div. And basically we're going to call that component six times. And it looks like I did some typos there. Oh, there's a problem. n is defined but never used. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, let's see. Well, I also need to. Oh, you know what? I think this will solve both of these problems. So it's also telling me I need to do a key. So if I do B bind P equals N, that might fix both of those problems. There we go. So I have a movies column, which for some reason is giving me, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have six columns, but for some reason movies is giving me um, like twice as many clues as it should be. I'm guessing these all aired for some reason. It has like doubles. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, for some reason it's doubling. This is very weird. Um, I'm not quite sure why I did that. Hopefully that was just like a weird reload error, which is my guess. Sometimes those happen. Um, are we homebrewing Jeopardy? Yeah, I, I guess you can call it that. Yeah. Um, so now we want them to like look like columns. So what we're going to do is some more CSS. So I think I can just get away with just doing rows uh, with, and then uh, it's going to be a hundred. I could do the math, but I don't want to do the math. 100 divided by 6. And we're also going to need to do display inline. Oh, I didn't do a colon. Colons are very important in CSS, otherwise you're going to have problems. Okay, well that's not doing what it's supposed to do. And again, this is where your uh, tools in here are coming very handy. Uh, I do. You know, I think the inline, yeah, okay. Inline is causing the problem, which is, there we go. Inline block, inline grid. Let's see which one. Let's do inline grid. It still looks rather messy, but this is better. Okay. Also, as you can see, we have this like 100 for this dollar amount, like everywhere, and it's also not going to work properly because we're only doing it in in that one component. So we're going to want to move that out. Um, we're also going to need to get these like all lined up somehow. Um, and it looks like you have doubles of certain things. Um, so for some reason you have music twice, so that's also something we're going to have to look at. As you can see, I'm just building lists of things we're going to have to end up doing. Um, so let's call this dollar amount. And again, we're going to use that parent function. So I'm going to just define dollar amount here. And I'm going to go into my component. And instead of, instead of doing, I'm going to remove this dollar tracking. And I'm going to say this.parent dollar and change the variable name which you really shouldn't do because you'll confuse yourself I often do but I often forget what I name things so that's really part of the problem okay and I got all those variables I think I'm also gonna want this to be its own div which I'm going to want to display as a block. Um, oops, the style is not right. Okay. So, I got my dollar amount. So let's just see if this is working. Um, I recommend just constantly testing when you're doing things. Not like just writing a bunch and then testing. Because then you're never sure what 
like if what you did is working correctly. Um, I also can like I would suggest trying to break things. Um, okay, so I want to somehow. So you can see this div is actually going over, which was not a problem when we were using the whole thing, but it's causing problems now. Um, okay, so I should have $200 and I can't click on this 200. Let's try from another column just to make sure. Um, for some reason, the width is changing when you click on it. That's the problem. I have no idea with that one. Okay. So, yep, yeah, I'm at minus 300 now. So, we are in, it is working, it seems like. So, now we want to make sure, for some reason, when you click on it, the CSS is changing. So, let's fix that first. Um, let's figure out um, this column width seems to be changing or something. <sighs> you know, I think part of this is because we have like some weird column and row. Yep, we have row and column in here. And I think I remember saying I might end up needing to delete these later. And it turns out I was right. Just gonna tab over. And I want to make sure I don't have any of that column CSS in there, which I don't. So let's see. If I reload this, then I'm gonna still have that problem. Nope, I'm still having that problem. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's inline grid. Oftentimes you need to play around with CSS. It is not often. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Okay, let's do inline block. Seems slightly better. Not a lot, but slightly. Yeah, that looks better, except for when things are not, part of the reason it's just like not matching up is because of, um, that's what I'm looking for. Because like, for example, this one only has one to 400, which is not great. Um, but there are ways to fix this. Um, let's see. I think we can do box CSS. Uh, position, I think, fix that might work again. <coughs> well, that did not do what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, maybe if I do top here, nope. This is why having like in the browser as opposed to like having to save it every time is very useful because I can just go through things and like play around with it and see if it works, which this did not. Okay, so you know what? This might be the time to do some um, cleaning on the data. Feels like that time. Okay, because like you have a column with nothing, you have a column with whatever. So, how are we going to do this? <coughs> so, okay. Let's say created. Hmm. Okay, let's just do single Jeopardy for now. And then we can go into double. So, what we're going to want to do is... Make a property, uh, say type of Jeopardy, and this will make it easier later when we integrate double. But let's go ahead. I deleted that prop value, which I'm 
threading now because what we want to do is go into prop, say type of Jeopardy. Yes, planning code is always just a lot. Um, and we're going to define it as nothing. Okay, so or actually we want to say it's a string. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so now what we have to do is do something with this created function. And we basically want to do some kind of cleaning so we don't end up with 200, 400, 600, 800. And we also want to do cleaning so we don't end up with like these weird double things that we got going on, which I'm not quite sure why that's happening. But it's something we can easily fix. So I think what we're going to want to do first is um, move this into a separate function. I think. Let me think. Okay. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay. So this is exactly how I think about coding like my other projects that are not for fun. Um, I just like randomly stare at things and be like, use your brain. And then my brain says no. Um, okay. So first we're going to want to just do single. So you know what? First let's look at the API and see if there's like a way of saying only give me single Jeopardy questions. Um, so clues. The value in dollars, the category min date offset offsets of the over two okay useful impact information okay so none of that is helpful number of clues categories count offset also not helpful well this is not helpful it does not give me so basically, sometimes APIs will have some things where like you can say, okay, I only want single Jeopardy answers or I only want the value of 100 and like a certain category or whatever. Um, but it doesn't look like you can do that. What API am I using? That's another thing we need to ask ourselves. <clears throat> Where are we? App.view. Okay. I'm using the category API. Just the category. Okay. The idea of the category. This is not helpful. So now we go back to cleaning data. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Okay, so let's look at the data first. It's always helpful for me. Um, it's probably like not the best way of doing things. I'm sure there's like better ways, but for me, this works the best. It's just putting a console statement and looking at it in the console. Okay, so we got the air date, the answer, the question, the value. I don't have any of that doubles. Okay, so what do we do? Um, Well, for one thing, we don't want this like if it's one through 300. And also we want to get, since it's single Jeopardy, we want to get everything with the 100. Hmm. Or 500. I'm trying to think of a way where I don't have to, to like basically like 
check to see that all the clue values are two, four, six, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. Um, but I think with single jeopardy, it's easy because there are odd number of values. You don't get a double jeopardy. So I think what I'm going to have to do is, let's see, find like a clue. Actually, this will solve, I think, both of my problems. So what I'm going to do is filter um, the clues. Um, so we're going to say if um, this dot type of jeopardy equals single. And again, this will make it easier for when we integrate double as well. Um, we're going to create a variable, actually, we're going to create a variable here called filtered um, type filter. And we're going to say type filter equals, and the reason we're not saying var type is because eventually we'll probably put an else statement. And if you do an else statement with, um, so if you do something like this, where you say var type filtered, and you say var type filtered here, then it's going to complain. So basically, we're going to just declare the variable outside, and then we're going to just define it in these if statements. So we're going to say type filtered, um, and we're going to say clues dot filter clue clue. Um, and I think it's value equals, and we want, let's see, uh, yeah, they're, they're, I'm just checking the type, so if you look, anything surrounded by quotes is what's called a string, um, and if it doesn't have quotes, then it's a integer, um, if it's a number and it doesn't have quotes, it's an integer. So I want to say equals 500 as opposed to equals 500 in quotes. Um, so then we're going to say instead of clues.length, we're going to say type filter.length. And then we're going to get the error date. And that might solve all our problems. Or it doesn't. Type filtered is not defined. So it looks like I did something wrong. Oh, you know what? Let's check what type of jeopardy looks like. That might be the problem. Let's see. Yep, type of jeopardy is not. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Let's see. Yep, type of jeopardy is not defined. So I did something wrong. Did I? Type of Jeopardy equals single. Type of Jeopardy equals, oh, I said prop. This would be props. Typos will get you every time. There you go. Well, it's working for everything except for the first one, which is weird. working for most of these. Oh, it looks like there's a problem. Okay, so sometimes it looks like this returns, let's see. Let's see, let's get the length of type filter. I'm guessing I do once a log statement clues. Let me just check the chat. Okay, so 71 is the clues, okay, and this is question, let's get the values 100, maybe there's no value, yeah, the last one doesn't have a value, yeah, these ones all don't have a value number, which means... Um, the length of our filtered clues equals zero. 
So that is a problem. So what do we do? So what I think we need to do is split this off into a function. So we can basically call that function um, again if there's a problem. So let's say uh, get jeopardy close function. Spelled function wrong. I actually caught it this time though. Um, I will say like colors are helpful in terms of I'm using something called um, this is called uh, VS code. Um, so like if you have a typo, as you can see, this turned yellow, but it should be a dark blue. Um, so the colors in any text editor are often clues for you. And I think this is the last thing we're going to do um, because it is almost two. Um, okay, so we're going to call this function get jeopardy clues. And what it's going to do is everything it used to do in created. But we're going to call this function get jeopardy clues in created. So we're just basically moving everything in created into its own separate function. Um, but how did that work? I get why that worked. Um, okay, so basically, uh, let's say if type filtered uh, dot length equals zero, then um, I don't think that's gonna work. We can try it, but I think it's gonna break it. Maybe if I put a break statement. Yeah, okay. What we need to do Hmm. is split what's in this axios get into multiple functions. So ah. Maybe I do an else statement. I don't think that's going to work. This is a little tricky. It's a little tricky to call yourself like the function you're calling inside the function you're calling. But, yeah, that worked, sort of. It also looks like it's calling the same. Yeah. Looks like we're getting the same random number. So we're gonna have to fix that as well. Um, but I can't tell if this is working. Well, that looks actually almost right. But I shouldn't be getting this 300 still. Hmm. Let's see, I need to look at type filter. And it looks like that function was not working. Oh, 70.
It's annoying. Hmm. Looks like you also have to do a filter clues for items where there's only two clues. Or four clues. Man, this is a very messy API. Which sometimes happens. Um, so let's see. I filtered clues dot length. Um is less than five and let's call this get jeopardy clues again else there's got to be an easier way of doing this This isn't working. Okay, we're gonna reevaluate this. I mean, we can still keep this in here, but I think what we want to do is since we split this out into a function um, or into a that's what I'm looking for um, component, maybe we want to do this in the Jeopardy board. So, I feel like there's a way to check components in a component. I'm going to double check that. But basically, like, we'd rebuild the component if something in the component. Yes, okay. There. There's a way of doing, like, children. Let's do, okay. Created Just make sure I build created right. I didn't build created right. Tell you based on Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I wanna do this children. Um so the same way we do parents, we can do children. Excuse me. And it looks like I think I need to do mounted. Sorry, one. Create is when it's created, and mounted is when like everything gets I don't know. Oh, there's like a Vue.js. Let's see. Vue.js um, lifecycle image that makes it easier. Lifecycle works. To understand what I'm talking about in terms of mounted and created, but even I only sort of understand it. Um, there was an image somewhere. I'm not going to waste a lot of time looking for it. There's an image that basically shows you like when things happen, which is helpful. Um, okay. So let's see if this mounted is working. Okay. So what we can do is, yeah, there's a, something called get Jeopardy. Okay, so I can look at the clues length. So if I wanna do a for loop, so for bar ch equals zero, ch is less than this dot children dot length ch plus plus which will allow us to basically um what sort i'm looking for iterate over the children um this dot children uh, that index dot, dot clues let's just do a console statement there we'll do a link So zero four sixteen two seven four three. That doesn't seem right. Something's funky going on here. Let's go to this link. Ah, okay. So mounted is not gonna do it. Okay. So it looks like we're barking at the wrong tree there. 
we're going to want to go back into this component to figure out how to do this. Ah, we're running out of time. Okay, so maybe we do part three if people want me to do a part three. Yes, this is definitely a headache. If they had built a better API, I would not be running into this headache problem. But I'm the one who decided to use this API, so it's half on me. Okay, so I'm going to do a get status, which basically just shows me I've modified things. And I also added a new file, which is our Jeopardy board file. And if I do a git diff, I can see the differences I've made. So as you can see, I changed this hello world to a Jeopardy board. I added a class to this header one. There's a bunch of stuff I did. You can see everything. So red is not anything I deleted. Um, green is things I've added. So I'm going to do git at, no, I'm going to do get status again, uh, git add source, and I can just add all the source files, and I'm going to commit it, um, part two Twitch stream, and I'm going to do uh, git push origin main. So now if I go to this website, What used to look like this, if I go to GitHub, as you can see, I pushed that commit, part two Twitch string, and it is brown. Um, so when this little circle turns from brown to green, to a green chat mark, which sometimes it can take a minute. Um, still taking a minute. This website should look like our local version as opposed to this. Um, let's see. Still rebuilding. There we go. Green check mark. Let's see. Sometimes it takes a while. Mm. Should be looking different. Oh, right. Actually, I need to rebuild it. I forgot about that part. Okay, so what I'm doing is npm run build, which is very common to, uh, it's basically the builds command for Vue.js. Um, and that actually gets defined in this package.json file. Um, so as you can see, if you ever forget like what, what, what's that thing I need to do to run the server? Or what's that thing I need to do to run the script? You just look in the script file and see there's serve, which is how we were running things locally. There's build, which is how I just built the application. And there's lint, which is how you run a linter which is that annoying thing that basically said um, uh, you have a variable you haven't used and gave us an error message. That's a linter. Um, how did I do this last time? Mm. Right. And I also need to copy everything from dist and dist CSS into docs. Okay. And I can add these docs files. And I'm going to call this my commit update build, and I'm going to push it to main. And okay. Now our website, as soon as that goes to green, 
should match um, what we had in our local environment. Um, does anyone have any questions? We have like six minutes left. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, some reason it is not. I mean, I'm guessing I did something wrong, but I don't remember what. Oh, let's see. Oh, you know what? I know what I did wrong. Uh, I think I need to copy, yeah, to dot. Um, the, if you're going to do this, this is not how I'd suggest, like, building the site. Um, for one thing, if you look at my docs folder, it's just going to get increasingly, like, like, these are all the files I just committed. As you can see, these are from five months ago. These are from two minutes ago. Um... Basically, it creates a new file called app dot whatever and like a random number variable every time you do a build. I don't suggest doing that. It's clunky. Oops. I'm getting closer. Okay. Oh, okay. Um... Okay, I need to change the API to an HTTPS and do another build because, um, so what went wrong is you cannot do a call from an HTTPS, which is what we're at, HTTPS dot uh, DN O'Neill dot GitHub slash Twitch stream. Um, and I was trying to call an HTTP API and you can't do that. Um, it's like a security measure. Um, how did I get interested in coding? Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird like road. Um, so I was the kid in college who basically had like five majors. Um, which, you know, um, which is like not necessarily the best. I mean, it's a good way of like finding, trying a bunch of different things. And one of my majors was actually CS at one point and I hated it. Um, so it's kind of weird that like this isn't what I ended up doing. But what I found is um, when I went to library school, I actually took a coding class because I figured it'd be a good skill to have. Um, and I found the problems within libraries and the intersections of coding, I actually enjoyed it a lot more. Um, so what I ended up doing and how I found out I enjoyed at least this type of coding was uh, taking a class and then I did internships, which um, when I was in library school, uh, is something uh, that a lot of people like is how a lot of people found out they did or didn't like things so um, if you know anything about libraries um, let me see one minute update build 
um, or library school. There are a lot of people who do like um, archives. Like my class in library school was like 70% archives and then people went and actually did an archives internship and hated it. Um, so that's actually, I ended up taking an internship um, at the Getty Research Institute with coding and found I just um, enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And there it is. It's on the website. I mean, obviously we still have these weird problems where we have random columns that are not building correctly, but that's how far we got. Um, any other questions? I'm, we're at 2 o'clock right now, so I'm guessing I need to stop streaming. Went live. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Um, hope everyone has a good day and thanks for joining.